Uh, President Trump very much on the defensive today as Joe Biden moves closer to a win, a crucial day in the vote count. Uh, what could come next, especially on the legal front? I want to bring in Eric Cedillo, attorney and clinical professor of law at SMU. Good morning to you. Good morning. So bring us up to date. We ended election night with a significant sense of uncertainty. We've been sort of eyeing six battleground states since Wednesday. We've got Wisconsin and Michigan that went to Joe Biden, and now all eyes are on Arizona, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Nevada. What are you looking for, and what should people be expecting at this point? Well, I think a, a cogent legal strategy by the, uh, the Trump team. It, it doesn't appear that they have one as of yet. It's kind of scattershot in terms of the number of uh, lawsuits they're filing and the request for relief that they're asking for. So I think a lot of it will see more focus once the actual returns come in. If he loses the next four states, as you just mentioned, then uh, it's a much more difficult road to hoe in terms of uh, having the election overturned in some way. If this was one state that we were talking about and perhaps hundreds of votes like we saw in Bush v. Gore in 2000, it might be a different situation. So I'm not exactly sure what it is they're going to uh, be able to lodge if, if the president is down in these four states that are remaining. So it's a situation where I think it's gonna be wait and see in terms of what the actual numbers come back with. If he loses 100,000 votes in Pennsylvania and he's able to perhaps toss out 50 or 100 uh, votes, that doesn't do anything for him. So I think uh, we'll see a, a much more uh, strategic focus after we get the numbers in uh, you would imagine, and then kind of take it from there. And as we've been waiting, we've seen the president's escalation in rhetoric. He's tweeted to stop ballot counts. What do you think he is intending to accomplish here? And and you did touch on the legal recourse for the Trump administration, uh, which doesn't seem very promising. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, unfortunate for them, I, I just don't see that pathway. I think the president, of course, came back and, and wanted to stop the vote. And unfortunately, we've been hearing that rhetoric for some time, for a number of months, with his uh, position that the mail-in ballots were somehow circumspect or problematic. Uh, we don't see anything. I mean, there, there's allegations of, of vast voter fraud. None of that is coming up. And, and from a legal perspective, you've got to apply when you get into a court of law, you know, facts uh, to the law. And we just aren't seeing that currently. Even if we did, even if there's some anomalies with respect to a process, there's going to be a universe of ballots that might be challengeable. And those that universe may be, you know, 500, 1,000, 5,000 votes. If you lose by, a, you know, 95, 100,000 votes, that doesn't really matter. So uh, I don't know what recourse this administration, or, or I'm sorry, this campaign is going to have, but uh, but it doesn't look promising at present. And with regard to these thin margins, what do you think we are witnessing here at this point in, in our lives, in history, really? Well, I think we have to wait for the votes to kind of come in, but uh, but it looks like the popular vote is going to, you know, be for Biden by a, a relatively, you know, wide margin, you know, maybe five or six million votes is possible. Uh, so I think it's something that if we look over the course of the entire nation, that uh, that we may be looking at something of a mandate. If he wins these last four states, you know, it's a situation that may be, you know, truly difficult to overcome. It's very possible that Biden could have 306 electoral votes by, uh, you know, by the end of this count. So that's much different than a much closer race. And it's a situation that, again, I think will prompt a more focused legal strategy on behalf of the, uh, the Trump team. And finally, I realize I'm asking you to sort of pull out your crystal ball here, but in terms of a timeline, what do you think we can anticipate today, tomorrow, this weekend? In terms of the projections, uh, I'm exactly. not sure. I think when if Pennsylvania comes back, I think uh, I think we'll have some some uh, some decent numbers by this uh, by this evening. But over the weekend, I think we'll have a much clearer picture of where this is going to go. Again, these are projections. Uh, it isn't official until the state certifies. Uh, the actual results, but uh, but I'm thinking by the end of the weekend, we'll probably have a really clear sense of, uh, of who the president's going to be. All right, Eric Cedillo, thank you so much for your time and insight as always.